Hello garden loves. So today is a shrub moving day. I've got a seed buddleia that came up last year and to be honest I left it in. I thought it'd be a good filler for the border but it does need to go to the back. So now that I know it's a nice healthy plant and the heat has come out a little bit, it's a bit cooler today and the last, next few days will be soon. This buddleia is going to come out and go over there at the back where it should be and then I can fill the front up with a lower shrubs and perennials as it should be because at the moment it's blocking too much at the back and I can't really do anything until that's gone so that'll be moving and then another random shrub that came up out of nowhere not 100% sure on that one to be honest um, I'm going to be moving that somewhere further up as well again towards the back and then that should free this lovely space up I've got some Lapita, Lavender, Rudbeckia um, helenium which will go towards the back actually and that will all go in here so let's get moving so I had to dig out a load of brambles from here the other day I will show you a little bit of what I've dug out it's a whole green bin worth so far and I've dug the hole still pulling out a few roots if you can see them down there of the brambles um, and I'm going to pop the buddleia in there and then I've got a cantinus which will go there excuse the contraption holding up the water feature there is no other way at the moment we've tried Concrete, no more nails to hold it in place. Bricks, as you can see. At the moment, the wedge system's working. So I'm gonna put a cotinus in there. There's a viburnum around there that I showed you a few, well, a couple of months ago now. And once they start establishing, plus a few other shrubby bits around it, um, it will offer support long-term. But for the moment, I have to use this system to hold it in place because it just blows over all the time otherwise. So yes, yeah, so a cotinus that I have kept in a pot over the winter we'll go in there and then this will be the hole for my buddleia and then the other random shrub i think i've got a little gap up there near the brambles so i'm going to pop that in there i think and i'm going to be using um not adding anything to the soil because it's quite good the brambles have actually done a good job at keeping it nice and fine tilth when you break, get to break it down it's done a good job working the soil to be fair but i will be putting some empathy mycorrhizal in about a handful, well, half a handful for the buddleia. I put it in with everything. I recommend it highly for any planting that you do. I've always had such good, exceptional results from using it compared to not using it. Anyway, so I'm going to plonk that in and then we'll see how we're looking. So here we go. I've dug him up, or her up, and plonked it in a hole. So it's quite, I've gone a bit deeper than the roots. Buddies are fairly tough old things. It will flop for a few days after I've done this. Anyway, you can see main, main roots are on, fibrous roots are still on. So as long as you've got, it will cut off because they go quite deep and far, but they don't need a lot of depth. So their root systems are normally close to the, to the surface of the compost. So when you dig down to dig Buddleia out, if you're moving one, as long as you've got some good chunky roots and fibrous roots all the way round, which we have, there's some there as well. Um, yeah, so then plonk it in a hole that's got about, you want to leave probably three to four inches, get quite deep, although some of that lower stem will be under the soil. It's not a problem, they're so tough. You're better off anchoring them in because they're top heavy with the lack of um, anchoring roots that they have. They go spready rather than downy. Um, and so yeah, just anchor it in by sort of allowing three-ish inches from the top of the soil to where your base of your plant is and I put the mycorrhizal just a good handful well light handful around in and in the soil that's going to go in and around it and also I do the air around it to encourage the roots to spread themselves out nicely and anchor them in so I'm going to fill that in and then tamp it down very nicely and gently and firmly with my feet and you can see I've already put the cotinus in I should have filmed that sorry guys so that's my cotinus looking lovely in the middle and I firmed it in using my feet and then leveled the soil out around it. So again, I went fairly deep with that one, about an inch from the surface, down, left to fill, backfill, and secure nicely into place. That's looking really nice, that one. So we've got our viburnum there, opulus, no, backwoodii, sorry, viburnum backwoodii, which will fill, start to come this way and fill out in a couple of years. Cotinus is quite fast growing, also known as smoke bush. So it's quite small now, but it can reach quite to the top of the fence, at least, if not more, eventually. So they'll nicely spread, nice deep green foliage, 
dark purple foliage and then it comes off it's deciduous for the winter so you have a nice structure behind at the back of the border and then our buddleia next door which starts off with silvery foliage petering out to a nice limey green and then of course the flowers in late summer into autumn which butterflies and the bees love so i thought that would be a nice combination together um, buddleia if it gets too big you just chop it chop it in the autumn when it's finished flowering as low as you like leaving just a touch so that it's above the surface and it will come back year on year stronger and better and it stops it going woody and leggy and horrible like they can do so yeah a nice combination of deep heat beautiful green the lovely purple once that starts coming up and tangling itself in with that one and then a silvery foliage on here so hopefully three nice contrasting shrubs that do something all different times of the year at the back of our deep border giving this board a bit of structure throughout the year and interest throughout the year and a good backdrop more importantly for our herbaceous plants which are going to go in the front or started planting already and i've got some from last year and the year before but this year i'm going to fill up even more so a nice backdrop for those i'm going to pop the soil around this firm it in and then we'll give them a good water tonight when it's cooled down a bit so now my buddleia and cotinus are in place and the area is cleared i'm going to put helenium moorheim beauty towards the back which gets to about 90 centimeters just over a meter which i think work really nicely against that foliage there of the cotinus and the silvery foliage here and then when that comes into flower into a deep purple that should be really nice and then that's towards the back of the border I might bring it forward just a touch although we go quite low there so it might be all right height wise and then to go with that um yeah so that's going to come over a little bit and then to go with that i've got a delphinium pacific mix which will be blues and purples mauves towards the back of the water feature so they'll grow up to about 120 centimeters so i'm hoping to create a pyramid effect from the top of the water feature moving to the side which i'll show you in a second so higher stuff here in terms of herbaceous not the shrubs behind high stuff here that they will slowly come down and around as we thin out towards the narrow part of the border i'm hoping these nice pops of color for sort of midsummer to late summer and into the autumn we start off quite nice and delicate and pretty pinks and contrasting oranges and then we'll go into sort of nice blues and then yellows and fireys as we're heading towards the autumn so it should be a natural change in color for spring summer to autumn so i'm going to pop these in three of them i'm going to use my mycorrhizal again for each one because i absolutely love this stuff root grow and a helenium and then what i'm going to do i'm going to get another one of these i have got other heleniums but they don't get as tall they're more of a dwarf variety so they'll come to the petering out bit so probably behind this rose or the other side out there to contrast with the things that are coming up around there but i'm going to get another one of these and put it the other side of the water feature so then we create a little bit of balance so i like informal planting but i like informality mixed with a little bit of structure so that's repetitive planting to give you that oomph and impact but also that nice relaxed planting of mixed grasses and textures and different flowers and floppiness and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to pop those in and then we'll see how that looks. So here you go, here's an idea. A full green bin of brambles and overgrown honeysuckle suckers, all sorts of bits and bobs that we don't want. And I've cleared out and made such a massive space, which is where I've planted those shrubs so much and there's still quite a lot to come out as well all right now that i've moved the buddleia planted the cotinus planted a bit of herbaceous alumium moorheim beauty and three lovely delphinium specific mix i'm now going to move this bad boy because yesterday let's have a wander down here yesterday i cleared this bit which was full of ivy and um runners of honeysuckle and brambles that have gone too far i'm keeping these in i keep them in last year and i keep them in this year because we get lovely blackberries from them and they're great for the wildlife and encourage the bees and they're near the bird table so whatever i don't get the birds will have so i'm happy to leave that in there however this bit was getting scrubby it was taking over the veronica you can see the eucarellas leaning forward because it couldn't get light i got a new peony in there which started off dark and has petered out to a nice green, but it was struggling. 
Um, this is Flox that's been in for a couple of years um, and it's flopped forward because the brambles and everything that was here pushed it forward. And uh, that's the GM I showed you on the last vlog, my little bonus GM that I thought I'd lost and came back. We've got a sedum there, which I will have to try and pick some of this, the brambles up and off because it's taking over that and my Cranesbill geranium. It's still flowering, it's been flowering since early May. Beautiful, anyway, that's getting taken over by weeds and whatnot. For the mm. moment, I've managed to clear this space here and that's where my random shrub that popped out out of nowhere is gonna go. And I might try, I might try and sort of gently taper it. So I might take lower branches off and maybe keep a side one or two and then try and cluster the top. So over a few years, I might try and taper it a little bit into a cloud shape, a very rough cloud. Anyway, let's see how it gets on once I've moved. So I dig that out now. And then this whole space will be nice and free for the cosmos and everything I've got in the greenhouse that's ready to plant out. Let's get digging. I think you can see it from here. That is said shrub moved. I've tucked it as close as I can to the blackberry just because I want to leave this open for herbaceous and maybe another little shrub. But yeah, she's tucked in beautifully. So I'll let it settle in. Probably it'll flop overnight um, like the Budlia did last night, which is a continuation of this video. I'll show you how it's looking. Um, so that's moved there. There's the Budlia from last night. So it was floppier than that this morning and it's perked up again. So that's good news. They are pretty tough things, Budlias. And that's the space. I've just dug it over. A load more brambles and varying weeds that I've dug out of there. And tomorrow I'll be cutting back the Veronica. So I'm going to leave it at that for this vlog and for tonight. And I shall be back on the next vlog with, um, I've got loads of potting on that I'm doing in the greenhouse. And then I'll also add on a few other bits that I'm planting in here. The cosmos that needs to go out and things like that. So that will follow on from this vlog. Thank you so much for watching guys. And I will see you next time. Happy gardening.